So the topic that I'm going to be discussing today is the dental management of patients on anticoagulants. Now this is a topic that, uh, I mean, there's guidelines for this topic available online, uh, but I've just summarized some of the key points. Um, this is something that can come in medical emergency part of the ORE exam, or it can come as part of the DTP where you have a patient who has who is taking anticoagulants, anticoagulants like warfarin, or has some other form of um, illness or disease that can affect the clotting uh, time of the patient. So um, it can come in any part of the exam. Um, so it's important to know this topic really well. Um, so first of all, who is really at risk of increased bleeding? Now, these can be patients who have any kind of liver or renal disease. Liver disease because liver is the part of the body that makes those clotting factors that stop bleeding. So, of course, if the liver is damaged, um, severely damaged, it can cause uh, increased bleeding. With um, renal disease, um, what happens is that the liver is responsible for some of the functions of the platelets. So, if there's any form of liver disease, uh, renal disease, sorry, then um, then there may be increased bleeding because the platelets won't function properly. Then alcoholism as well because that affects um, that affects the liver and can cause liver damage, which can then cause increased bleeding. Um, then bleeding disorders like um, hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, and current use of cytotoxic medications because this also affects the clotting. So these are the patients you want to keep an eye out for when it comes to increased bleeding. Um, now, there are certain procedures that we can do in any kind of patient, even if they're on warfarin or any other kind of medication that affects bleeding or if they have liver disease, renal disease, and then there are other procedures in which we have to take into account um, the, the disease or illness or the medications that the patient's taking. Now, the um, there's a safe list um, and basically we can do any procedure from the safe list in any kind of patient without further consultation from their um, clinic, their GP or from their sp the specialist who is dealing with them and then there's a list in which there may be, so the significant risk is basically the list which tells you which procedures cause excessive bleeding or may cause excessive bleeding. So first let's go to the SAFE list. Now the SAFE list is basically uh, procedures which include simple restorations. This can be pit and fissure sealants, it can be fillings, um, plastic fillings. So so any kind of fillings is fine. Uh, supra gingival scaling um, is also part of it. Uh, the local anesthetic technique using buccal infiltration, intraligamental and mental block because these procedures don't really cause much bleeding. Um, impressions and other uh, similar prosthodontic procedures because they won't really cause any bleeding, hopefully. Um, now, the significant risk procedure, the, the list in which the significant risk includes LA uh, with nerve block um, or lingual or floor of the mouth infiltration. Um, then subgingival scaling and root surface debridement. Of course, the gingiva, if the patient has a lot of gingival disease, then these kind of procedures can cause excessive gingival bleeding. Uh, crown and bridge prep, of course, this also, you know, because the margin may be below the level of the gingiva or is below the level of the gingiva, it can cause excessive bleeding. Uh, minor oral surgery procedures, or so this can be flap procedures or perio surgery, which can be. Um, gingivectomy, etc., extractions, um, biopsy, endo, and incision and drainage.